Hey folks, it's Carrie Oberbrunner. I have with me a super cool friend. She's a client. She is a world leader, and I don't mean that lightly. Deborah Brown, welcome to the um, live stream. Hey, Carrie, it's good to see you as always. Awesome. Listen, you, I geek out over what you're doing because <laughs> really, before I met you, I heard the word governance and I probably had baggage. I probably didn't think it was a, a sexy word. I probably came from elder board meetings that were not fun. So I really didn't like it. But the more I've spent time with you, you are, you, you showed me that governance is everywhere. And it's not a question of if, it's a question of what type. And is it a good governance or a bad governance? Can you tell us a little bit about how families, churches, businesses, everything is ha uh, run by governance? Well, I think you know, I, I I know when you say that word has baggage, some <laughs> people hear governance and they think government. Um, and it's not government, it's governance. Uh, governments need governance and they need good governance, but so do companies and so do families and so do we as individuals. Mm. So if you think about the principles of governance, uh, there's there are probably about 12 really good principles of governance, but think about um, the principles of, say, you know, the governance principle of leadership or stewardship, okay. being a good leader and being a good steward. We yeah. all need that in our lives, right? We, oh, we absolutely. all need that. The better, we, the better we take care of things, steward things, the more we're able to take care of or given to take care wow. of. The more, the better we lead, the better leaders we become, the more legacy we have, the more influence we have. Um, and so you think about these principles of governance and maybe even the principles of, of accomplishment. Yeah. Um, we're all looking for results. And That's so you good. think about, you know, Carrie, you talk all the time about Im impact and influence and income. Yep. And that's all a derivative of a well-governed life or business. Oh, gee, that's good. Okay. So I, oh, I like this. So I'm putting words in your mouth, but here's what I'm taking away from it. Um, people don't have an income problem. They have a governance problem. Oh, for sure. Whoa. Mm -hmm. okay. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Yeah. So even us jumping on StreamYard, StreamYard has governance where they say, click these things that you agree to. Um, they say, if you don't show up live on Facebook in 10 minutes, your, your, your thing is done. Like people don't realize this, but every day, all day, there's governance being thrown at them. Even um, a drink that I just had, a uh, nutrition drink on the back, it has nutrition um, ingredients that have certain amount of, um, you remember back in the day, we didn't have to put how much fat was in something cholesterol. You just, you just sold the thing. And then governance comes around and says, now every product needs to have this label. Governments spend all kinds of time on regulation for just that very thing and deciding what's going to be in that. That's all Whoa. regulated and uh, and governed. And it's usually they get input from industry associations. So okay. the people who make the contents that go yeah. into those energy drinks, they have industry associations and those are governed. And wow. they would come together and they would advise <laughs> the government on you know what they can or can't or should or shouldn't put in. So that's all like just an energy drink, the governance that goes into ensuring that when you drink that energy drink, you know exactly what's in it. You know that it's safe to put in your body um, yeah. and and that's all that's that's governance and everything we touch in life is governed that is cool I love how you see the world that way because I see the world through IP and publishing and you know anyone who hangs with me jokes around like hey Carrie's gonna tell you you got a book in you but I really believe it but as people hang with you they they really understand governance is not a bad thing it's a thing, and now we have to make it be a good thing. Um, but you and I have recently chatted a lot about metaverse. I'll tell you what, I'm already going to pre-order your book, and it's not even for sale yet. <laughs> but I, I, I'll tell you what, I am so excited for this book because 
I'm a big fan of metaverse. I've been talking all day about it, interviewing people. We say the metaverse is not good or bad, but the metaverse is neutral. But now that it's this wild, wild west, open freedom, no regulation for a lot of people, this is where you and Microsoft and Google and many other companies are starting to say there needs to be governance even in the metaverse. Tell us why that, why you think so. Well, uh, and you can go on your past secret scary story if you want. I, I could go into my secret scary story. Well, yeah, I guess I that is probably as good a time for that as any. Okay. Um, you know, Carrie calls me an old, and what is it? An OG, OG. an original, original gangsta. gangsta. <laughs> I'm an original gangsta. Yeah. And uh, so I joined Second Life back when Second Life was first launched. And uh, I was doing a master's program at the time, and it was a, um, a, a master of divinity. And so I had to do a project. And I thought, well, I'm going to go into Second Life, and I'm going to start a church. And so I went into Second Life, and I built this beautiful church up in the sky. It was all glass. Uh, I should I say I built it. I, my yeah. son-in-law actually built it for there me. You go. Uh, but it was this beautiful church styled out actually after a church that's in uh, North Carolina. Wow. And uh, anyway, we had this beautiful church. And so I started to notice there were other churches in Second Life. And so the Catholic Church, they had a whole ministry there, the United Church. The, there were a number of different um, yeah. denominations who had a presence there. And I thought, we're all doing this thing. And it seems really quite disorganized. So maybe it might be good to start a ministerium. And so we joined together. I kind of got, I went around and visited all the churches and got all the pastors together. And uh, we set up this organization so that we could do joint initiatives. And we did, you know, what's this fun thing at Easter. And wow. uh, anyway, we, we, we did a bunch of different things together as this ministerium. And so we had one gentleman join us who was a bit of a lay leader in one of the church churches. And, uh, and he joined Joined us, and he liked to kind of come and hang around and follow me around a little bit. And I didn't think much of it. And so one day he invited me over to his place. He said he had had bought this this thing in Second Life, and hey, pop over and see it. So I popped over, and um, he proceeded to um, sexually attack wow. my avatar. And um, it was shocking to me. Yeah. When you're in um, in these like a place like Second Life, yeah. it's very real. It's yes. you in there. It's not somebody else. It's not a, a, a you know a, a toy or a character. It's you in there. And so I felt physically attacked oh, in, yeah. in that space. Yes. And, you know, I, I I was fumbling around. I was trying to find on my keyboard, oh, I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. And I mean, it turned out that this particular individual uh, was come, my, my name on Second Life was Wisely Solomon. And I didn't make that up at the time they gave you your name. And uh, so he said, I wanted to get the great wisely Solomon and bring her down. I did wow. not want her leading in the church. He said, so now I'm exposed. And he, what his plan had been is he was going to try and get into this uh, relationship with me on second life and then expose me to these other church leaders. Wow. And so it was just, um, it was a, a weird experience, yes. but it, I felt um, physically sexually oh, yeah. attacked. For oh sure. yeah. Yeah, it has stuck with me. Mm -hmm. I absolutely. I've studied this. You knew I, you knew I knew abuse was coming in the metaverse. Yeah. And when it hit in November, the big story about some woman being assaulted, I, I quickly said, yes, I knew that was coming and we need to do something about it. Um, but they've even said counseling, uh, professionals have said that there will be PTSD yeah. from, from these types of things, because like you're saying, I mean, you didn't have the goggles, but it really doesn't matter whether it's any type of assault, text messaging, Facebook messenger, um, comments, 
I mean, when I get a comment that's attacking me, it sticks with me. It's like, oh my gosh, why is that person so angry? So you're saying that we need governance mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to help with this metaverse. To protect people from that, or to at least have some sort of recourse. Um, at the time, we had had some rules of engagement for our uh, for our group, and yeah. um, but we tightened up those rules in terms of who could join and how you knew what their credentials might be. And uh, so we had to, you know, just tighten up some of those governance structures and systems uh, to protect the people in the group. Wow. This is why you've had a book in you for a long time. First of all, your books are amazing. You have what, four or five? I don't even know. How many, four, I got four. Well, I guess I have five, but four okay. that are. Okay. <laughs> so you got, you, you, you put out these books that we've been honored to be your publisher and they're just fantastic. They're all about governance. And I've been hope, hoping and praying. I hope that she writes a book on governance. Cause I just, I just know that until we get that thing figured out, we're going to have a lot of sideways energy mm -hmm. and not make a lot of progress. But yeah. to me, interoperability, which is like, how do I be who I am in all the metaverses is very important because people are not, are not going to want to have to buy product services, avatars, clothing, and then have to transfer that just like you have Twitter and then you have Instagram and they're not the same followers and they're different and you have, you know, all that mass interoperability is in my opinion, first mm -hmm. and, and right there with it first is governance. So if the metaverse is poorly governed where people aren't able to have transparency with, um, what would you call it? Purchasing. Tell us some of the bad picture and then tell us some of the good picture. And don't be afraid to pull out one of your book principles because we want to throw people that way, even though it's not out yet. Yeah, well, I, I think um, hmm, I think maybe communication is, is probably the principle of communication, which is, you know, you you want to be able to balance transparency with privacy. So privacy is a is a huge issue on the internet anyway. Yes. And so you need some foundational principles in place to be able to balance that. Um, you know, that, that that's just kind of table stakes. And yes. so what are those foundational principles, those non-negotiables that we can all agree to? And I think there's some things we can take from what we have now on the internet, but we're going to have to amp it up. And so I think communication is um, is absolutely uh, one of the foundational. I like that. For sure. Yeah. And I mean, there's I told Dean, our pastor, my pastor, I said to him, man, listen, there's going to be tremendous opportunity in the metaverse. But I said at the same point, I don't envy you because back 20 years ago when I was or whatever, 15 years ago when I was a pastor, I would be counseling people about having an affair. Now it's like you go into the metaverse, you can be somebody else. You can be a different gender. You can be a different age. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff where it's like, oh my gosh, we need governance. What do you think's going to, I know you can't predict this. No one can, but what do you think is going to happen? Do you think there's going to be like a, coalition of people that suggest common standards or well i i think absolutely there's going to be a, and i know um carrie there's uh what is that the metaverse like standards um, or something standards yeah. yeah and those are the the big players are coming into that to to build standards i listened to um, the gentleman responsible for metaverse for meta in a, in a podcast oh, yeah. recently. And, you know, he's talking about some of the, the standards that need to be in place. And wow. so I think um, it would certainly be my hope that we all come together and say, what are the non-negotiables that we can all agree to? And that is not going to be an easy task. And no. so I think when my book comes out, governance for the metaverse, I'm going to talk about the foundation 
What, mm. what are the principles that have to be on the foundation of that, that you can then build on? It's a little bit like your house. If you build your house on sand, it's, uh, it's not going to oh, yeah. stand for long, right? And so I think if we think about how can we be good stewards of yes. the metaverse and therefore what are some of the, some of the, what's the foundational understanding of the stewardship aspect and how can, what are the parameters around the way in which it's led? And what yes. are the parameters around um, authority and accountability and uh, communications? And is yes. there, are there some, things we need to communicate about just what's the standard for integrity um, wow. on, uh, on in, in the metaverse? What does that even mean? And, yeah, and, uh, and on that point, let's take that point for a moment. Mm -hmm. I've heard people say, you would never say to a person in real life what you just posted online. Yeah. I, I've heard that before. That is so true. Right? So there's almost this governance out there online where the moment you think nobody knows who you really are you can kind of fudge a little bit but then yeah once you're called out it's like whoa i didn't mean that and and wait that wasn't me and, and hold on so i do feel like the blending of these two worlds are going to be so important mm -hmm. um, I could see even you've chatted about this in the past intellectual property there's different countries and we won't name them but there's different countries that might have a different definition of ip like yes. well well i didn't need to quote you i didn't need to say that was yours <laughs> um right i can tell you there's different countries but there's different people in every country who would say uh -huh. oh well you know ip what's that yeah yeah wow yeah. So, so this is a, this is a true, I, 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 I'm so excited about this. And the reason why you look at, we haven't had new lands that we've discovered in a long time. It's not mm -hmm. like we're, we're saying, Oh, look at that country that we didn't know was there in the world. We're really discovering a new land. It, it's, it, well, it's the metaverse. It's a new universe yes. uh, is being created in cyberspace. Wow. Wow. So, and whenever we start a book launch team, I'd never thought of it like this. This is why I like chatting with you because you, you expand my brain. But whenever we start a, a, a private book launch team on Facebook, we even Facebook will tell you, create guidelines. So now when you join Facebook groups, it says, do you agree that no bullying, no hate speech, no this, no this, no this, no this. But you're really setting up shop for governance. In that is governance. Group. Wow. That's the policy level of governance. Wow. Yeah. So you see how, I mean, think back to the playground. We used to have the the boys club, the girls club, no girls on, no boys club, <laughs> whatever. But even those days back of like, hey, if you're going to be part of us, you need to jump over that stream to, you know, like that's governance. Um, yeah, it's the, the rules of the road. What do they say? Good fences make good neighbors. Oh, and yeah. so when you think about policy and writing policy, you're governing guidelines or the rules of engagement. That's like putting fences in place for how well we're going to oh, um, operate cool. together and work together in the neighborhood. And so good fences make good neighbors. And it will be the same in the metaverse. There will need to be some good fences built. That is cool. Okay. So we have about eight minutes left. Let's let's give let's give the crowd a little sneak peek, because first of all, tell them what you do on a daily basis. Tell them about your business. I mean, you're big stuff. Like, you know, you're humble about it. But <laughs> but once people Google you, they'll be like, oh my gosh. So you <laughs> you are you are really one of the nation's leading governance solutions. Is the name, but tell us what your company is, what you do, and then we'll talk about your uh, conference talk. Okay. Well, we um, are a governance uh, consulting company. One of our 
one of our uh, arms of what we do. And so we work with boards of directors and CEOs and C-suite executives, and we help them set up their governance structures. So we work right across sector, private sector, public, not-for-profit. We work uh, certainly here in Canada. We're probably, well, we are the, the leading governance consultancy here in Canada. And we work all over the world as well. We've worked mm. as far afield as Indonesia and Malaysia and Africa and the Middle East. East and South America and Central America, mm -hmm. the U.S. So we, we work all over the place and, and we work primarily in helping boards set up their governance systems and then in educating them. So we have a, a second company. Uh, it's the Professional Director Institute, and it's a training institute for boards of directors and where they can become certified as a professional director. And so that we spend a, a lot of time doing that. And um, then the sort of third pillar of what we do is we uh, provide software solutions for boards. And uh, then I guess we have Kind of four, we have a four legged stool, and the other piece is publishing. And as you say, uh, Carrie, I've got a number of books out, and uh, the one I'm most excited about is this next one, uh, governance for the for the metaverse. Yes. So in our last few minutes, give people a little taste. I think that your lifelong legacy has been here are the twelve, but it sounds to me from from my limited knowledge that you're going to take the 12 and you're going to put a new spin on it for the metaverse. Is that, is that kind of what you're thinking? Yeah, I think uh, in this book, I'm going to go through all of the aspects of the metaverse, shall we say, that people are always asking questions about, or, or maybe it's web web three, but you know, what, how might we govern the metaverse? How might we govern cryptocurrency? What is that? What's the good? What's the bad in it? And mm -hmm. let's just say, okay, well, what are the non-negotiables that can underpin that so wow. that we can prevent the bad from happening and set it up for success for the good side of it happening? And uh, so I'm going to go through the through the the most significant technological changes or impacts that we're seeing related to the metaverse. And I'm going to say, okay, well, what would be those non-negotiables? What yes. would, how might we steward it? How might we, yes. lead it? how might we ensure effective uh, communication? How might we ensure integrity of those systems? How wow. might we ensure that our results are the results that we anticipate and hope for and not the ones where, um, you know, people are, are being assaulted yes. um, when they head head out and, uh, and yes. get into the metaverse. It's interesting. I was on a chat this morning with a gentleman interviewing him for the podcast, but he's in he's in Dubai and he basically was saying his name is uh, Sharad Ar uh, Agarwal. And he says that in Dubai, am I pronouncing that right? I don't know. Dubai. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I've You're never welcome. been there once I'm there. So Dubai, um, basically they're now saying when you start a business, you have to have a metaverse plan. Like, in other words, it's kind of like our, our world, our country saying, if you have a business, what's your website? Mm -hmm. Now yeah. they're saying, if you have a business, what's your metaverse plan? Cause we want to know how the integration between these two worlds is going to happen. What's the user experience? Um, are we are we really getting there? What do you think? Is this is this coming this quick? I mean, well, we I think it's I think it's coming quick. It's certainly not going away. Yeah. And you know, if you think about governance, governance is a system by which organizations are directed and controlled. And so, if you're thinking about, I am going to set up a company, and I need to um, be clear on its direction. Mm. We know directionally, it's going to be headed into the metaverse. It wow. is. It just it's not wow. going away. And whether that's uh, this week or this year or in five years, yes. um, you have to be thinking about what's the direction that we're going to set for this organization. So I think it's a, it's probably a very wise and forward looking strategy. Yeah. Well, folks, listen, I purposely bring speakers who I say, I want to be in the front seat taking notes and you bet as the Igniting Souls Publishing Agency 
moves into the metaverse, we are seriously re-envisioning our governance. And that's why I think um, Deborah's session is going to be so critical. It's kind of like um, what, uh, what my friend was saying this morning. In 1992, his talk was called 10 Reasons Why You Should Probably Get a Website. He said, he said, he said, or maybe, <laughs> yeah, yeah, in 1992, right? Um, because yeah. back then that's what people were saying. I don't need what website, I got the yellow pages. It was like a brochure, right? Right, but today that is, he said, all I did was put a new word in why your, your business should probably have a metaverse strategy, and then right along with that meta, metaverse strategy. Is governance. So that's why that's why I know Deborah's book is just going to be so critical. Thank you for trusting us to be like the first crowd, even though you have decades of experience in governance. Thanks for testing out this new content on us. Mm -hmm. We're excited. Well, I'm excited to be there. You know, I I, I love the ISC conference, um, and uh, I think it's. Um, it, if you want to be someone that um, wants to live your life with uh, your soul on fire, then yes. why would you not want to go to a conference where you can <laughs> learn about how to get your soul ignited? I mean, That's it, right. it, just, it only makes sense. And oh, I true. know it's been an experience for me where I have, it's caused me to step back and look at things a little differently. It's caused me to get um, great ideas and spur my creativity. And I've certainly come away with some amazing relationships. I know, Carrie, you you and I are, yes. uh, you know, we're we're yeah. tight, and um, and that's a relationship that grew out of that conference. I know um, I've got a great relationship with others there, Dr. Yes. Brenda and others, and um, so I I can't speak more highly oh, of, of that conference for sure. Thank you. So, folks, go to ignitingsoulsconference.com today. Check out Deborah's workshop, and uh, it, this is going to be an absolute blast. So I would say you can't afford not to be there. 